As ICU capacity remains at zero, Southern California's stay-at-home order is extended. The one thing the state says will determine where our numbers go from here. Plus the action taken by CHP as crowds going to see snow in the mountains lead to a huge backup on the highway. And a San Diego veteran working hard to clean up our city and get others to take action. In our season of hope, we look at the moment that put him on the path to conservation. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. It's been no break in the surge of COVID cases hitting San Diego for two months. And that means Southern California's stay at home order has been extended. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. Steve Atkinson has the night off. In the region's ICU capacity hit 0% more than a week ago. It has not changed. ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco shows us the one thing you can do to help reverse the stay at home trend. Hair salons, gyms, movie theaters, other non-essential businesses won't be allowed to open anytime soon. Restaurants must continue with takeout only. The governor's regional stay-at-home order officially extended, likely for at least three weeks. Much of what we're dealing with is avoidable. Much of what we are seeing can be stopped if we collectively make decisions to stop it. California's top health official, Dr. Mark Gailey, says ICU capacity for Southern California is still listed at 0%. Tuesday, he explained that doesn't mean there are no beds available, but possibly not enough to care for patients coming in with other serious medical needs. When we have seen uh, hospitals with ICU capacity used up for COVID above 30%, we consider that ICU in that facility or that region's ICU capacity really ill prepared to serve. Galley says the 14 day positivity rate is just over 12 percent with a 36 percent increase in hospitalizations. He blames the increase largely on people gathering with others outside their household. He predicts holiday get togethers will lead to a surge upon a surge with the worst still ahead. Christmas gathering and infection becomes amplified uh, a bit more exponential over the New Year's, New Year's celebrations, and we could see the worst of it in early January. A region's ICU capacity must be at least 15% before the stay-at-home order can be lifted. Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. We are still waiting to see our case rate turn around. Today, the county's average number of new cases over the past 14 days closing in on 11%. There were more than 2,500 new cases reported today. Our total has now surpassed 150,000. Today, the county also announced 31 more people have died from the virus, more than 1,400 people since the pandemic began. The county has confirmed that Sharp Hospital went against local protocol and gave the vaccine to hundreds of San Diego police officers who are not included in the current 1A vaccine rollout phase. Sharp Hospital told ABC 10 News that its staff made the right decision under the pressing circumstances since the vaccines were about to expire. About 300 vaccines in all were given to officers and firefighters. Police officers and firefighters are included in the next phase of phase one, but it's 1B. We are awaiting comment from the San Diego Police Department. As Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines are rolled out in the county, we're checking in with some San Diegans who spent months participating in vaccine trials. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala learned, people in both studies who only got the placebo may soon have the option of getting the vaccine. Moderna and Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccines have been rolled out to some members of the public, but the studies are still ongoing and many trial participants may be anxious to find out whether they got a shot of the placebo or the actual vaccine. This was my, my way to contribute. Leslie Sullivan signed up to take part in Moderna's two-year-long double-blinded study. I don't officially know, but I do feel 99.999% uh, positive that I got the real vaccine just based on the reactions that I had. All the trial participants received an email from Moderna 
talking about what the next steps are. That email from Moderna explains that participants who want to know if they receive the vaccine or placebo will have the opportunity to be unblinded. If they receive the placebo, they'll be offered the vaccine. Scheduled visits are expected to start on Wednesday. You could get the vaccine and continue with the study or even I think they're hoping for some participants that will stay blinded. Pfizer has laid out a similar plan. A statement sent to ABC 10 News from Pfizer says in part, we have developed a vaccine transition option so that all interested eligible participants 16 years and older in the placebo group have the option to move into the vaccine group in the study. Pfizer says this plan will be implemented in a phased approach, starting with healthcare personnel and residents of long-term care facilities. As for Sullivan, she hopes to officially find out soon which group she's in, but says no matter the outcome, she will remain in the study for the full duration. I would stay in the trial. Honestly, I think clinical trials are vitally important, and it's part of the process that most people don't think about. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Participants are encouraged by both Pfizer and Moderna to remain in the studies for as long as possible, but they can drop out at any time. And we are learning more about how National Guard troops are helping Palomar Medical Center during the pandemic. A team of six troops were deployed there yesterday. For what our soldiers and airmen do is they fall in to the respective civilian leaders of any respective medical facility, and they will do whatever is needed to augment the medical support or medical treatment needed at any given facility. The team is considered a regional medical support team and it will be led by either a doctor or a nurse. Dozens of troops were sent to help two local nursing homes in Santee and El Cajon in the past few months. Nurses and other health care workers made their voices heard during a car caravan protest outside Palomar today. They're unhappy over waivers that granted Palomar the ability to increase their nurse to patient staffing ratio from two to one to three to one earlier this month. Nurses say they're concerned of being overworked and say that it would put patients and staff at risk. In a statement, Palomar said in part the waiver will only be used when necessary based on patient needs and volume. The hospital added it will do everything it can to protect staff. And you can follow the latest coronavirus developments from new cases to ICU capacity all on the ABC 10 News app. You can find that free in the App Store. San Diegans flocked to our mountains today to see the season's very first snowfall, but the rush created a major backup on the highway. ABC 10 News reporter Leah Pizzetti shows us how the CHP is managing the gridlock. We saw that snowfall Monday and now Tuesday. It seems like everybody tried to come to the mountains to enjoy that snow and it did create a bit of a headache. People driving up Sunrise Highway off the 8 ended up waiting for hours as everyone flooded up the mountain to enjoy that snow. CHP giving tickets to people who were parked in the streets up at the top of the hill. People getting stuck. It created a headache up at the top of the mountain. But for some people who visited, they say even though they waited for hours in the car, it was still worth it. Unfortunately, when we got here, we waited about three hours on the mountain and then got turned away at the top, but it was still fun. We stopped by the side of the road and played in the snow and just had a good day out of the house. We didn't really care. <laughs> but the big message from CHP today is Please, we know the snow is here. We know you might want to enjoy it, but be cautious. Stay home. It really did create a headache up at the top of the hill. Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. Coming up, the ABC 10 News Pinpoint Weather Team is tracking a warm-up and other changes in the seven-day forecast. A woman was arrested this morning after El Cajon police say she threatened a paramedic and rammed their ambulance with her car. Police say the medic was responding to a call about 7 o'clock when a neighbor repeatedly hit the ambulance while trying to get out of a parking space. Investigators say the woman then hit the medic several times and threatened to kill him before taking off. Officers say they found her at a nearby gas station and arrested her. The paramedic was not seriously hurt in that call confrontation.